first shift back from being honored was read a termination letter and escorted out by a police officer for bringing her views on this divisive and charged issue into the workplace. There's a story, this one isn't uh, out of out of the South, but it's, you know, really relevant to, you know, some of the themes of unionization being important and, and necessary, uh, even for things as seemingly, you know, people take for granted the idea that we have free speech in this country, right? I mean, that's that's kind of like, it's almost it's almost a meme at this point the idea that 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 we have free speech in America and and it's really important and and the right specifically cares a lot about freedom of speech and and you know they want to make sure that millionaires get book deals and famous people can speak on campuses without getting their feelings hurt and all this kind of stuff and and you know I mean look I I'm not to I'm not totally unsympathetic to everything that you know the right has said about freedom of speech and quote unquote cancel culture over the years you know I mean I I have there's a, there's a certain amount of, of sympathy that I have with, with some of those things but the idea that the frustration that I have with those folks is their um, the shield that they use of you know, I am a, a free speech warrior and I, I, I don't, you know, uh, I may not agree with what you have to say, but I'll fight for your death the right to say. And they only utilize that rhetoric in service of advancing right wing reactionary pro corporate narratives right. uh, that are kind of out that, that are so far beyond the norm that they're a little bit out of vogue, even with kind of the reactionary capitalist press, you know? So uh, I, I'm thinking of people uh, talking about how, um, you know, uh, it was it was such a shame that, for example, like Milo Yiannopoulos, I mean, this is a, you know, really a, a throwback. That's a but, deep cut. Yeah, a deep cut. Milo Yiannopoulos was protested when he was going on his dangerous F-word tour, right? And, like, people were like, uh, protesting that, you know, and so they didn't want Milo's feelings to be hurt or, you know, I mean, there's all always these types of people. Right. And and people's book deals uh, got canceled because, um, you know, the the publisher was like, oh, you know, actually, we don't agree with this or, or we don't really want to be associated with these kind of politics. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, Wait, sure. you mean a publisher exercised their property <laughs> rights under <laughs> capitalist America and some right. people on the right don't like that? Yeah. You know, I mean, look. When, oh my God! Hypocrisy! Yeah, you, you no, know, if I <laughs> no, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, if I'm talking to a person that I feel like is is in good faith, you know, I'm happy to have conversations about the extent to which not only should we have free speech in in as far as the First Amendment goes, which protects us from government retaliation, but that we should also have a culture of free speech and, you know, a willingness to hear ideas that we don't agree with and, you know, that we might find offensive and uh, all this kind of stuff and, you know, like whatever. I'm open to that conversation, right? But the thing that really frustrates me about the people that constantly want to have that conversation is that there are some glaring blind spots in the coverage of these people, particularly as it relates to free speech issues in Palestine. So here's a story out of New York. And this is just I, the 180 that this company did is... It, it's almost almost unbelievable. You know, it would it would be unbelievable if you were not familiar with anything. Um, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you didn't listen to the Valley yeah, Labor if you, Report, if you didn't listen to the Valley Labor Report, you would say that's not true, Jake. There's no way that's true. But if you have even like a modicum of understanding about the world that we live in, you're not going to be surprised. Anyway, Hessen Jabur, a labor and delivery nurse. Uh, this comes out of The Guardian, written by Bashkar Sankara, president of The Nation magazine. Uh, uh, Hessen Jabur, a labor and delivery nurse, was recently, was recently honored by her employer, NYU Langone Health in New York, for her work with grieving mothers who had lost babies during pregnancy and childbirth. A supervisor, a manager, right? This is, you know, I mean, these are... These are the bad guys, right? And these are what they're saying about this person. A supervisor read from a note during this award ceremony that said Jabur not only provides stellar patient care, 
but also provides support for the rest of the nursing staff so that we can all live up to her example. I mean, really high praise here, right, for this employee. Jabur, who is Palestinian-American. Oh. Uh, yeah, here's the problem. <laughs> I right? see where this is going. Graciously accepted the award and took the opportunity to devote a small portion of her remarks to draw a connection with grieving mothers in Palestine. I mean, this is really kind of the stuff that we want to clamp down on, right? The idea that we could have empathy with uh, mothers in New York and Gaza? No, we can't have that. That's just too much. When she reported to her first shift back at work, however, she was sent to meet with senior leadership at the hospital. First time back. Like she has... Her bosses, she has said, told her she, quote, put others at risk. Put others at risk. I've heard of radical empathy, but <laughs> Jesus. not in this way. Quote, ruined the ceremony and, quote, and here's the real thing, offended people. Offended mm. people with her yeah. remarks. She was sent back to work, but several hours later in the same ship, first shift back from being honored by the hospital was read a termination letter and escorted out by a police officer, not even allowed to leave on her own volition, escorted out by a police officer. NYU Langone told the New York Times that Jabur was fired for bringing, quote, her views on this divisive and charged issue into the workplace. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tblr.fm slash donate. And yet, we have not seen the self-described free speech warriors coming out in defense of this uh, of this person. Has we, Elon Musk we, tweeted about it? We have it? not seen people like Elon Musk. We have not seen people like Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, uh, and and all their other acolytes. Does Joe Rogan get Joe on his Rogan podcast? In defense of this person, of this, and this is this is the thing, right? Like all these other people that we're talking about, that these people are are constantly saying that that normal working people need to be up in arms about, like, oh no, it's so terrible that this millionaire didn't get another book deal. It's so terrible that this millionaire was not able to speak in the way that they want without getting their feelings hurt. You, as a normal person, need to be all up in arms about this. And yet, when a, a working nurse a nurse just expresses her opinion in a small portion of her remarks while she's receiving an award. She is fired unceremoniously and none of these people give a damn. Right. I mean, this is this is the problem. And this is why I really have no interest in actually those kinds of things, because uh, because the, the, the people that are constantly pushing this are, you know, I mean, th they're not genuine they're not right. sincere they're not it's acting in good faith, faith. and yeah. so that's why i you know that's why i'm not going to be devoting my time to these types of the, to these types of kind of free speech type culture war issues when it's not concerning a working person right i just you know there are plenty of people out there defending millionaire right wing freaks right they don't need me yeah you know <laughs> but but people like hessen jabur nobody is out there talking about uh, you know, none of these types of people are out there talking about how this is how this is, you know, just an offense on all, you know, any standard of human decency that you can conjure. And this is why it's important to have a union in the workplace, because one of the very first things that a union is going to get in a contract is something called just cause, a just cause procedure for uh, disciplinary actions uh, that means that if your boss wants to terminate you or discipline you it has to actually be for your job performance right it should be a fundamental right in this country that your boss cannot just willy-nilly because they woke up on the wrong side of the bed condemn you potentially to homelessness I mean that's what we're talking about when we're talking about people being fired from their jobs in this country is that they lose their income, they lose their ability to pay rent, they lose they, they lose their ability to afford housing, to be able to eat. All of these kinds of things are all uh, health care, 
right? All of these things are tied to our employment in this country and the idea that for any reason or no reason at all, your employer can take that away from you is absurd and it is why we need unionization and worker power so that the employer cannot exercise this type of dictatorial, tyrannical, irrational behavior on working people. Yeah, I can only hope that, like, people also see that, like, this was literally someone that won an award, <laughs> like, the day before, like, literally the best of the best, and, um, you know, can be dismissed that easily, that, like, we are all disposable in this kind of system without any labor protections. It really is, you know, I mean, it's just difficult to, you know, it, it, it it's difficult to imagine right the i i yeah. i'm offended by this person you know i mean we we obviously we cannot take seriously that she put people at risk you know i mean the idea of that is just is just absurd on its face and the people who uttered those words should be ashamed and embarrassed for their complete butchering of the english language um but the idea that 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 they should be able to do this to this person because she offended people in her remarks um i love that they say ruined the ceremony yeah. it was her ceremony <laughs> Yeah, she should be the judge of whether or not it was ruined. Right. It was literally for her <laughs> and her great exemplary work performance. The reason you pay her to be oh, there, by the way, good to do gracious. those things that she does so well. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and it's uh, it's very frustrating because, uh, you know, the workplace is not a place of free speech. And right. you have to recognize that and deal with that and folks who want to ignore that they are acting in bad faith i mean that's just all it is to it like you said earlier it's not a surprise that like every time they're defending controversial free speech it always happens to be like some bigot right mm -hmm. some right. fascist right where are you out defending communist and anarchists who are saying crazy stuff yeah or right. stuff that you right. think is crazy right um where are you defending them um yeah, it's really bothersome, but you know, I, I really hope that this uh, this sister finds some yeah. kind of defense. Like, I hope folks come to her aid. This is a situation where mutual aid is really important, um, and because you're right, uh, she needed a union. Mm -hmm. um, but in the absence of that, I'm hoping community can kind of rally behind her because this is such a clear example right. of. I mean, one of the most egregious things that I've, right. I, you know, I've, I've seen stuff like Literally this. Literally the same yeah. day you get the award. <laughs> it's just bizarre. You, I mean, like, or like your first shift back. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's very, very And troubling. I mean, for the people that, for the people that do, the, you know, because there are normal working people who have these concerns, like on, on the right about, you know, uh, I, I want to be able to say like politically incorrect things and not be fired. And, and you know, <laughs> like uh, for normal people like that, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to spend any time devoted to like defending millionaires but you know look i mean if you have a union actually typically your union is going to say like okay yeah you know look i mean wow this guy he's like he's an asshole and wow that was a really dumb thing that he said but you also you still can't like make this guy homeless you know you still can't fire this guy and i've known i have known unions that have gone to bat for you know like quote unquote kind of conservative politically incorrect thing and that's actually typically the norm right yeah you, you i mean know, it, it free speech for everybody that's actually the the union position that that you do have yeah you know if you're not actually gonna threatening people at your job or or making people you know genuinely feel unsafe you know your union is gonna say like you should have free speech you know outside of you know outside of work and and you know you're not being uh, all this kind of stuff you know your union's gonna stick up for you I don't know. It's just so frustrating. I it's it's unbelievable this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just really hate to to see um, that happen. And and you know, Palestine is definitely an issue where you see that hypocrisy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been interesting to see that. Like, I think the popular consciousness has changed a lot on this issue. Yeah. Over the last few months, but um, you even still, just the past few weeks, honestly. Yeah, it, it seems like more and more folks are kind of waking up to what's really going on there but there's still such a s enormous pushback from the establishment um that that people are still being targeted and, and retaliated against for speaking up um you know and that i don't know it shouldn't be controversial to recognize that some people who are born 
halfway across the world are just as human as we are. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's a very controversial statement in some circles. And we should really applaud um, this person because I imagine she was familiar with her workplace Mm -hmm. and knew that there was probably some risk of retaliation, even if it wasn't, you know, being terminated, but that there was like some risk by um, saying that, but that it was important to her to say that. Right. Right. She had a platform. There was a clear connection, right? She was speaking on behalf of grieving mothers. How could she not think about that? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's in solidarity to her for sure. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 